Hello, humanoid unity aficionados. I am Director Bot, the greatest directing robot ever created. Today, we are going to talk about motion blur and how it applies to your Unity project, as well as your cinema director cutscenes. I'm sure even the average human has an idea of what motion blur is, but I will explain it anyway. Motion blur is a visual artifact in which a fast-moving object in an image appears to be streaked or blurred. This happens naturally in photography and cinematography. You see, when you are taking a picture, either your camera's artificial intelligence intelligence or yourself has to decide on the best shutter speed for the image. Shutter speed defines the amount of time for which an image is exposed. The longer the shutter speed, the more light is let in and the brighter the image is. Typically, in darker scenes, you want a longer shutter speed to make things more visible. In cinematography, you don't have the luxury of picking whichever shutter speed you want because movies run at a consistent frame rate of 24 frames per second. That means the absolute longest you can expose a frame of film for is 1 24th of a second. The typical exposure time for film is for half of the frame rate or 1 48th of a second. Since this seems to emulate the motion blur humans see in real life fairly well. However, unlike photographers, Cinematographers, especially those who shoot on film as opposed to digital, tend to measure shutter speed in degrees rather than a fraction. So, the typical shutter speed for film is usually expressed as 180 degrees. That has nothing to do with a 180 degree rule, by the way, silly humans, where 360 degrees would be the entire 1 24th of a second. This is because old mechanical motion picture shutters were circular, with the cutout portion of the circle allowing light to pass through. Using more or less motion blur than what is typical can be used for dramatic effect. One famous example of this is the opening sequence of Saving Private Ryan. The cinematographers chose to use a much shorter shutter speed in order to give the scene a more staccato, more realistic feel. For the shots of explosions, the camera team went with a 45 degree shutter speed, while much of the sequence was shot with 90, and it makes those shots look nice and crisp. It's just one of those things that humans don't tend to pick up on while watching the film, although it does tend to emotionally impact them anyway. Silly humans. Anyway, I think I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent here. How does this apply to my Unity projects, you ask? Well, since we don't use a real camera in a video game engine, we're not limited by things like shutter speed and exposure, and motion blur is not naturally occurring. But if you're going to go for realism, or to emulate a film look as we explored in our last Unity Tips video, then you're going to need to figure out a way to emulate motion blur. Well, humans, I got good news. Another human already did all of the hard work for you and put it on GitHub. Check out the link in the description to download Kino Motion, a post-processing effect for Unity made by fellow human Kajiro Takahashi. Using the image effect is as simple as using any other image effect. Just import it like any Unity asset, select your camera, add a new component to it, and search for motion, and the script should show up. And as you can see, this script even expresses shutter speed as an angle rather than a fraction, which should help you nail the exact cinematic look you're looking for. Think of the motion blur samples here as the quality. The more samples you use, the more realistic the blur will look, but the more taxing it will be on your poor CPU. Lastly, there is a strength adjustment, which will determine how opaque the previous samples show up in the current frame. I like to keep this set to a relatively low percentage. And that's it, humans. Hopefully this guide gave you some insight in how motion blur works and how to effectively apply it to your cinema director cutscene or other Unity project. I'll catch you humans next time.